just a little bit. But first, here we stand on the plaza at the end of the month of August, feeling the baking sun on top of our heads. And here's the thing, that August sun doesn't just make us tired. Your plants, who have been cooking in it all summer long, they're getting a little tired too, and sad looking, if I can say. Now that we're heading into September, it's time to freshen them up. You can do that by swapping in a few fall-friendly blooms. Gardening and outdoor lifestyle expert JJ Lund is here to advise us on how to straddle the season and come out with gorgeous plants like the ones you bought today and pots as well. So here's the thing, there's another phase of gardening that we have to think about? Yeah, pretty much what it is is job security for us. <laughs> there's always a plant to sell, right? But really what we're trying to do today is show you guys, you don't have to break the bank every September. Let's just take your old stuff, rejuvenate it, and maybe replace a couple things. Well, you say break the bank. It can be expensive to completely it gut, can. rehaul, clean them out. So we don't have to do that. No, not always. I mean, sometimes you want the new fresh look and you can do that. But in this scenario or what I'm going to show you today, we can just prep it up, rejuvenate what you got. I warned JJ ahead of time. We haven't really gotten into the nitty gritty gardening conversations together yet. This is our first <laughs> This is our first run at it. Yeah. You're talking to a novice, a beginner. Well, so you look pro to me. Dumb it down for me, but show me what I can do to bring those plants to life. Okay, well awesome. Well, I got a couple geraniums here. Okay. There, some of these are struggling a little bit. You can see I, we purposely made them look bad for you today. <laughs> that must have killed you to do yeah. that. Yeah, you won't find anything like this in our nursery. No. I'll tell you that. But no. anyways, so you see some dead stuff. Like some people think this is dead. Well, it's not. It's not dead? This no. looks pretty dead to me. That's it's pretty just, dead. It's just asleep? But what you do is you just pull this bad stuff off. Okay. Even these bad leaves like this, yeah. just yank them off. So you just go through the entire plant like that, and what you're creating is all the nutrition is going to go to the healthier plants now. Okay. Right? The healthier leaves, Instead I guess you Instead of fighting say. to get their way up the brown Instead stems. of fighting it, yeah. Just pull it all off, and you just go from there. Then okay. You, so you can turn something that's been in your planter all year long yeah. into something look pretty. What if it's beyond repair? What if we'd be plucking off every single leaf I had to offer? Well, if it's beyond repair, you know, we come on goodbye. down. All the nurseries have them on super good sales this time of year because we need to get rid of some stuff. Yeah, so sure. Go down, buy some new stuff. But even when you're trying to make it look good, remember, get it to this point, you put on some fertilizers, mm -hmm. and some of these things will bloom back out. Okay. So we can also now talk about like some fall bloomers and different plants that if you have a dead one to replace it with. Yeah, point like. us in a good direction. What do you recommend? Well, let's just start with this one over here. This is beautiful. Yeah. So I had some guys at the nursery throw this one together and I'm actually going to take this one home to my wife. Oh, she's going to appreciate you for that. Yep. So nice move. Bonus points for me. Yes. <laughs> these, these little guys right here are called uh, potato vines. Uh huh. They're really easy. Uh, they'll hold a lot of color all year long. Okay. It's easy one to put. This is spikes in the middle. It's mm -hmm. kind of the filler piece, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you got the impatience here, mm -hmm. and they're not spelled the same, but my wife now every time walks out and sees <laughs> my husband is not impatient because he got me a pot full of flowers, right? She'll think of you on the Fonzer side of the street yeah, when she exactly. sees this. So you're kind of referencing that old school formula, thriller, spiller, filler. Yeah. Is there an updated version to that, or do we just stick to what works? Well, there's an updated version as now it's September, so you uh -huh. have to update your thriller, filler, and spiller. But that all. formula still applies. Formula still applies. Okay. It works all the time. I love that. I love that. Oh, just seeing the autumn colors, my favorite season. That's yep. the first time I've said that. I'll say it 50 times before the <laughs> season's over. But tell us what you've done down front. Well, kind of more dramatic statements. Let me show you about here. So this, we're using a big grass here. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's got a lot of foliage, even in the winter, this thing will hold that foliage and that look. Mm -hmm. So even though it'll look a little bit more dormant and dead in the winter, it still gives you some substance. What do we have going all on right. here? So we got some uh, Vinca Minor. Okay. We got some... Oh, I put the tags in here for you even, actually. Hey, good. We love those cheats. Yep. Nice. How many plants should you group based on the size of your container? Is there a good rule of thumb? There's not, but I would say, let's say you have a 20-inch planter. Yeah. Maybe put 10 plants in it. If you have a 30-inch planter, 15 plants. Cut it in half. Cut it in half, pretty That's much. That's good. That's good. Depending on how full you get and how full you want it, you can do that. I love two things about this. I love the height because I have one of mm -hmm. those newer, really, really tall doors. So if yeah. you put this on either side of my front door, that would help kind of anchor and frame that. I also love the motion. For sure. Is that a silly thing to compliment? The motion no. of this plant no. as it moves? No, I like the dance moves it's got also. <laughs> it's got a good dance card. Okay, yeah. what's down here? So here you got a bunch of geraniums. We got some coleus pineapple. Mm -hmm. We got some red head. Mm -hmm. Fountain grasses here, hence the I got red hair. So <laughs> I wanted to put some red head grasses in Look for at you. you, you're all over that. Yeah. yeah. We got some uh, Carex grasses. This is a perennial, so it stays green all year as, mm -hmm. as well as these, but this stuff's all annuals. Mm -hmm. So this stuff later in the winter will die out. You'll have to change it out. I feel like you've got a lot of statements going on here from height to I spill. I mean, there's a lot of bold plants making their mark, but somehow it works. Yeah, 
No, for sure. I mean, you, I mean, you just have fun with it. Do you have to change your watering or your fertilizing schedule when the season changes? Correct. So yes. now that the temperature gets a little bit lower, it's not as hot, you will definitely down your water. Okay. Um, but with the temperatures getting colder, you want to down your water, but you're going to up your fertilizer also. Okay. So quick tip for fertilizer. Yes, please. Is Actually, let me grab this and show you. So when you got your fertilizer, it's got three different numbers on it. Uh -huh. It's got the 9588. Right. So the first number is for the nitrogen. That's what makes stuff green. Uh -huh. Second number is for the phosphate. If that number's high, the 58, that's what you want. That, that's what brings the blooms to flowers. Oh, okay. So when you're looking, always make sure that you get the middle number big this time of year for big. your plants. Okay. All right. I don't know that's ever been properly explained well, to me. Good job. there you go. I learned something. I learned a lot of things, actually, in the last few minutes. Yeah. All right, one more container that caught our attention. Tell us what went into this. Yeah, so this is all perennial stuff. So this okay. stuff will co could come back next year. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing when you do a perennial box, you want to remember, if you leave it outside in the winter, mm -hmm. put it on the north side of your house where it always stays cold okay. in the shade. You can even dump some extra snow on it. You don't want it to come in and out of the climate change. Okay. So try to keep it, try to keep it cold. Uh, cold. Are these succulents? These are sedums. Oh. Is that a succulent? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it? It kind of looks like when it's rubbery. Yeah? We're going to go with yes. Is this a succulent down front? Sort of, yeah. Confirmation from the side, I guess yeah. so. All so right. So we got a bunch of hookahs around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the hosta in the middle. We got the Japanese forest in the back. Okay. Again, just trying to add some more color and different things. And Ooh, the textures you've mixed together and the colors, it screams fall. And again, we'd follow that rule of thumb, take the measurement of your container, chop it in half. That's the number of plants that should go in there. Because they're so full. Yep. I think yep. that's what catches your attention too, It's just how full. Yeah, you don't want to look at the dirt in your planter beds, right? Yeah, we want color. We want yeah. plants. And you brought yeah. some beautiful ones today. Your wife's going to be so happy. Yep. We're Bonus thrilled points. with the advice as well. Hey, and if people want more help, where can they find you? Shade Home and Garden Center. 435 South Geneva Road, Orm, Utah. And it's a cool concept, not just plants, but decor too. You yeah, we got mix. a cool little home decor section. Like, I go buy stuff for my wife and she's You're just like, winning all around. Oh, you know what? I'm in it to win it, right? <laughs> happy wife, awesome. happy life. So, you've learned that. Guys, it's easy. It's on Geneva Road. Just stop, get your wife something cool, go home. Awesome. You'll be the hero of the day. Thank you so 